what I know about alcoholism and, and addiction is, you know, you end up dying a very lonely, angry, resentful, painful death. Hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for joining us again for another inspired conversation. We're so excited uh, to introduce today's guest to you. This is a first on many levels for us. Our guest today is a former NHL hockey player and one of the most illustrious sports figures of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Trust me, if you were close to a TV or if you're a sports fan, you definitely know who he is. With over 1,000 NHL career points, a Stanley Cup win, and an Olympic gold medal under his belt, he's one of the most successful athletes of all time. He battled with alcohol and drug addiction throughout his career and later revealed that he was sexually abused as a child by his coach. Today, his mission is to help bring awareness to the deep impacts of trauma and the importance of trauma healing, as well as helping people overcome any obstacle by igniting leadership, action, and resilience from within. Together with his wife, Jennifer, he travels extensively to help and support the First Nations in Canada. He's the host of the Theo Fleury podcast, and a highly popular, inspirational, and motivational speaker. Please welcome with me, Mr. Theo Fleury. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's an honor to have you. You know, Theo, I um, going through your life story, there's so much left out in this short little intro. I could have gone on for, for hours. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, it's one of the things that really hit home with me. We were introduced by a mutual friend, Jim Gale, Food Forest. Yes. Residents, and he said, you got to talk to this guy, Theo Fleury, and your name rang a bell, of course. And, and he said, he says, like you, he says, trauma is the root of all suffering on earth today. And I thought, wow, this is, this is it in a nutshell. And we, before we dive into all of that, Theo, trauma is always connected to a human life, to a real story. It sounds so abstract, but it's right. re a real story. Where did your story begin? How did you become Theo Fleury, the, the hockey star, <laughs> and all of that? Where, where did that start for you? Well, it's it started from trauma, right? Um, so I grew up in a home where both my parents struggled with their own unresolved trauma issues, childhood trauma issues, and... You know, that manifested itself into addictive behavior. My dad was an alcoholic and my mom was a prescription pill addict. And so I grew up in, you know, a lot of chaos, a lot of drama, some violence um, and whatnot. And uh, we happened to be living in small town Canada. And uh, I was walking home with one of my classmates from school. And he said, hey, we're having our first hockey practice today and uh would you like to play and i immediately said yes and ran home asked my mom if we had any equipment and we searched around the house and found you know an old pair of skates you know some old hockey gloves a broken hockey stick um i don't know if you remember the old sears catalogs you know oh yeah i do <laughs> Yeah, I remember is, catalogs, just ordering yeah. stuff from catalogs. Which, which is basically Amazon now, right? And, uh, you know, I used these two catalogs as shin pads and uh, put all this stuff in a pillow sack and went down to, you know, the local arena, which was an old barn <laughs> that they converted into uh, an arena. And uh, so I put all, all this equipment on stepped on the ice, didn't fall down, didn't struggle, and absolutely fell head over heels in love with hockey. Because if I was playing hockey, I didn't have to be in the insanity of my life, which was, you know, at home. And uh, and so basically I spent, you know, the next 40 years, uh, you know, pursuing uh, a career in hockey and, uh, you know, worked extremely hard at it. And, uh, um, because I was ultra talented, um, you know, that hard work paid off, uh, and I had a, you know, very successful 15 year professional 
hockey career and, uh, um, you know, was surrounded by great people, great mentors and, uh, played with the greatest, some of the greatest guys in, you know, the history of our sport. So it was amazing. Oh, wow. And, you know, uh, talking about a Stanley cup win or talking about the gold medal. I mean, these are, you know, especially in Canada, but anywhere in the world, these are the, you know, these are the moments that, uh, every athlete li lives for right and one of the things that is so astonishing and people don't see this as you're here on camera but you're not necessarily the tallest guy and and for hockey you don't have to be nba tall but you're even for hockey standards you oh were, yeah you're one of the shorter ones so people didn't really give you uh, much of a chance to have that kind of career right no no it was uh well when i first broke into the nhl the average height was six feet average weight was 200 pounds and I was five foot six, 100, 150 pounds. So from a pure physics perspective, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to play. And not only that, I was told many times, you're too small. You're never going to make it. You're too small. You're never going to make it. But, you know, I never, I never listened to the noise. I believed in my ability. I believed in my talent And, uh, you know, I was the ultimate competitor. And I think that that whole package, uh, you know, was the biggest reason why I had the success that I had was I competed at the highest level every single night. And, uh, you know, I was willing to die in order to win. And I knew that a lot of my opponents that I was playing against weren't willing to die in order to have success. And, uh, you know, that was the, probably the biggest reason why I had success is I competed, you know, at a very, very high level. And then you add in the skill and the talent and, you know, all these things. And, uh, you know, I was one angry son of a bitch too. So that, that helped too from, all of my past trauma experiences in my childhood and my adolescence, I was a really sort of angry individual. And, uh, um, you know, there was, there was, you know, the NHL was the best anger management class I could have ever, you know, attended. And, uh, so you combine all of that. Um, and, uh, yeah, you get a, a guy that played 15 years in the NHL, played a thousand games, had over a thousand points, seven NHL All-Star games, and uh, you know, world junior champion. Uh, I won a championship in the minors. Uh, I won a Stanley Cup, won a Canada Cup, and you know, finished it all off at the end of my career by winning a gold medal at the Olympics in Salt Lake City in 2002. That is amazing. It is amazing. You know, I'm, I'm a former athlete and I never made it, not even close to that kind of level. And it's just um, understanding what that takes. And and you, as you said, you had the skills, you had the hard work, you were, uh, and you are a true warrior, which helps in the game of hockey. But um, it is all the more astonishing because you said you were practically for large Uh, periods of that career, you were under the influence or, or, or battling with addiction and with drugs and alcohol, which I can tell you, uh, competing hungover or competing, you know, after one night out is not easy, but <laughs> whole career, I can't even imagine. So all those factors must be absolutely, you know, off the charts for you to be able to do that. When did that begin that part, the, the traumatic part or, or the trauma um, self-medicating part, if you will? Yeah. So, um, you know, as a phenom hockey player, I was 14 years old and uh, I was a part of the very first ever Bantam draft that was held in the, the Western Hockey League. And the Western Hockey League or the Canadian Hockey League uh, produces 65% of all NHL players that play in the NHL. So I got drafted when I was 14 by a team called the Winnipeg Warriors. And the summer after I was drafted, uh, the guy that discovered me and drafted me and scouted me came to my house and sat me and my parents around my kitchen table and basically said, you know, we think Theo needs better competition, better coaching. Uh, 
he can move to Winnipeg every day after school. He can practice, you know, with our junior team and get him ready for the following years when I made my uh, debut in the Western Hockey League. And, uh, and, you know, my parents knew right from day one what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. And so they didn't hold me back. And so I moved to Winnipeg when I was 15 years old. And needless to say that decision and choice would change me for the rest of my life because the scout and the guy that drafted me over the next two and a half years would rape me 150 times over a two and a half year period. So, you know, I was left with a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of anger, a lot of resentment. And there wasn't anybody in the world that I could have told because you get, you know, we're talking what, 40 years ago, and nobody was talking about trauma, nobody was talking about mental illness, nobody was talking about sexual abuse, nobody was talking about anything. And so um, I discovered alcohol very soon after, um, uh, after that as a coping mechanism to suppress, you know, all this emotional pain and scars that were left behind from, you know, not only my parents, but also from, you know, this coach that I'd been associated with. And so, you know, I became an instant alcoholic, right? And, uh, um, and basically for the next 27 years, I used some sort of addictive behavior to, you know, manage my life. And then eventually, um, as we all know, you know, your addiction never gets better. It continues to get worse and worse. And, and uh, you know, along the way, things disappear. Wives, kids, houses, jobs, uh, friends, you know, all of that. <clears throat> and so... Uh, in 2004, I was living in the desert in New Mexico and uh, decided one day that I didn't want to be here and went down to the local pawn shop and purchased a gun and some bullets and went home and, uh, you know, was fully prepared to take my own life. And, and, uh, um, and I'm, you know, fortunately uh, for me, I couldn't pull the trigger, which then said to me, you know, you actually want to live. And, uh, but I had no idea how to live life on life's terms. You know, all I knew how to do was cope, you know, whether I was angry, lonely, sad, mad, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I knew it was a feeling and I knew how to make it go away. And, uh, and, you know, that day really, I needed to do that exercise because I needed to figure out that I wanted to live, but also I needed to make, you know, some significant changes in my life. And, and that started this amazing journey of healing and, uh, you know, uh, unpacking all this trauma and all this stuff that, that, uh, you know, had happened in my life. And, you know, now I have the greatest life you can possibly imagine. And, and, uh, but it's been hard work, you know, Healing is is not for the faint of heart, you know. It is uh, an ugly, uh, lonely journey, and uh, but you know, ultimately, uh, I'm so glad that you know I chose to to live a sober life, and and not only that, but also uh, you know, work on the things that I've needed to work on. That's an incredible story. And you, you said something, um, trauma is at the root of all addictions. So this is, you know, this is a, maybe not fully understood, but it's beyond that. It's really, a, because for some people it does not express as addiction, but it does express as suffering as a repetition of patterns in life it expresses right. as, as a, as a disease in many different ways. But, um, you are probably a very unlikely uh, character to speak about this, like you told to me, like you told me, and per probably I am too. We come from a, and you come from hockey. I come from skiing, but uh, to stay with hockey, it's a very aggressive, manly, yeah. masculine sport, and yeah. and especially in 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 your prime time, 
like you said, it was not a time where you talked about feelings. You didn't even go and see a coach. I mean, you were, you know, if, if anything, you weren't right in the head and that was it. And so you got to get your head straight. That was kind of yeah. what we said. <laughs> so for you to come out and, and, and so be so vulnerable and speak about uh, the, the deepest wounds, uh, I think, you know, empowered a lot of people that mm. were watching that maybe have a similar way of looking at life, you know, very macho kind of. So right. how did you how did you discover that journey once you did start speaking out? Wh what were the reactions? And did you feel a, a did you feel some sort of relief just having it out and not hidden anymore? You deserve the truth, but Big Tech does not want you to hear it. So we built our own inspired platform on the inspiredchannel.com. To watch the full video and more, just click the link in the video description or the pinned comment.